Let's just get the chair. Okay, good. Well, welcome to our class. My name is Professor Phil Shapps. And I usually like to talk a little bit about what this is going to be, this, this incredible journey that we're going to take. Gosh, incredible journey. Um, well, this is me, and then I'd like to uh, introduce you to my, let me just mute that, and I'd like to introduce you to my teaching assistant who helps me grade papers. Uh, if I can get, there he is. That's my dog, Elton. He's a medium golden doodle, and he will be, uh, Anytime I have any questions, he kind of uh, nudges me and says, I got to go get something to eat or I have to make my offering to the lawn. But he's a pretty sharp little guy. Anyway, my name is Phil Shapps. And um, if you read my bio, you knew that I or you know that I was the executive director of marketing for Universal Pictures for over 20 years. And um, I was also the director of marketing for a software company, which is United States, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. And, um, and I've done other things in between. But I started teaching about 10 years ago online, and I love it. And I decided just that's what I'll do, and I'm doing it. So... Um, one of the other things I'd like to do is, um, and I did it when I was a kid, I was a magician. I really like magic. So before we even get started, I know some of you might be on the phone, uh, but if you're near a computer, um, let's, let's try this. Let's try an online magic trick. Are you ready? Take your finger and place it on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. You want to change it? Go ahead. If you're going to change it, change it now. But now, hold your finger wherever it is and listen carefully to what I tell you. You should be on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. All right. Now move your finger left or right to the nearest diamond. I'll wait a second for you. You got it there? Okay. Now I want you to move your finger up or down to the nearest circle. Okay, did you do that? Great. Now listen very carefully. I want you to move your finger diagonally to the nearest diamond. Okay, good. All right, and finally, move your finger left or right to the nearest circle and I should have no idea where it arrived. Wow. Did you get it? Anybody? All right. So let me just start off by saying this class is really easy if you want it to be really easy. It could be really hard if you go into it thinking it's really hard. So what I would recommend is that you consider that it's really easy. And then it'll be easy. Just don't wait till the last minute to do it. What I like to do in this situation is I like to get into the class, do my discussions, and you know, and then I have all the rest of the week to figure out my essays and things like that. So what's, the diff what's different about international business? So international business encompasses, encompasses all commercial activities that take place to promote the transfer of goods, services, resources, people, ideas, and technologies across national boundaries. Okay, so what we mean by that is business that is done outside of the United States. International could also be called global. And, you know, uh, companies like, there's a lot of companies. If you've ever been into Europe, there's Starbucks, McDonald's, all these companies that are uh, here in the United States have expanded their businesses 
to garner additional money franchises in other industry and other countries. As you work through the, the next six or seven weeks, uh, you'll look and see what the difference is in marketing and selling. Last year I was in Morocco and uh, I was in the, in, uh, I went to Fez, I went to Marrakesh, and I was in the Sahara Desert riding camels. And, you know, just to see how different things are. There's so much that is similar because they follow the Western world, but yet the culture, the way the people eat, and the way they dress is so different. One of the things that really, really amazed me was in all of the artistic structures, there was the star, the, the Muslim star, and next to it was the Star of David, which I was surprised to see that there was such a closeness between the Hebrews and the Muslims, and much different than we would see here in the United States. So the Muslim star has eight points, the Hebrew star has six points. And in art, when you ever see these sculptures and everything, they always include both of them together. And those are two cultures that lived with each other for hundreds of years and got along. And um, it was really eye-opening, you know, as opposed to seeing uh, the way we react to specific cultures that come here into the United States. So this week you selected a country and you're gonna do what's called a trade attache course project. It's not that difficult, but what you should do right now is just skip ahead each week and take a look at it if, the, if it opens. I, I, some schools don't allow it the each week to open, but I would go all the way to you know week six and seven and take a look what you're going to be doing and how everything you're doing now um, you know works in uh, in you know in tandem to get to that place. So you're identifying key information about the select selected country. You're going to develop a mind map that summarizes the key differences between international and domestic businesses. At the end of this lecture, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to we're going to go over a mind map because it seems like it's a real complicated thing. And it's not. And actually, it's a lot of fun because I did a couple and I really enjoyed doing it. And it gives you sort of that uh, ability to be artistic and, you know, have a ha do other things. You know, we're not all, you know, sort of focused in this academic world. Some of us want to do a little creativity along with, you know, what we do. And I totally promote that in this class. OK, so creativity is OK with me. So uh, you have some required reading and, um, you know, the, the reading is, you don't have a textbook. So, you know, this is pretty much, uh, you need to kind of go over it and read and, and, and scan it. And, you know, it's really going to help you with your assignments because you're going to get a focus as to what you're going to be doing. Uh, let's see. Okay. So. By day two, you have a discussion board, you've selected your country, and you will identify the certain aspects of the country. Um, and if you haven't picked a country yet, you know, take a look at my announcements. By the way, the tips that I leave in the announcements will really help you. I know I leave too many, and that's sort of my, you know, I always thought, what would I like if I was a student? And I would like a lot of communication between the instructor and the student. So I write a lot, you know, uh, I'm going to try to do less duplication. And if it's in something you're interested in, uh, then, you know, take a look. Anything that I do, like previews or summaries or anything like that, it's kind of good to just scan over it. Okay, so you picked your country. And you're going to write about the geographical location and size of the country. Where is it located? You know, we only have so many uh, continents. 
the population, all the stuff you can get online. Uh, but make sure you put your sources in your work. Uh, I'm really big on references and you telling me where you got your information. Otherwise, you could just make it up and that's not going to work by me. Uh, the ISO code, national currency. In, um, in Morocco, it was uh, Dirma, Dirma, Dirham, 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 Dirham. And it was 10 Dirham for American, for one American dollar. So, you know, you, you go into a, I don't know, you, you go have a taxi cab driver and he tells you it's like 50 dirham. And you go, wow, that's like so expensive. Five bucks now. You gotta, you, so you have to kind of translate these things. If you've never been to another country and you want to, um, in Europe now, everything is on the euro and that's really easy. And, uh, but when you get into a country that has their own currency or still using their own currency, like Morocco, and uh, you know, you have to kind of get used to it. Uh, in England, they have the pound. Um, I, don't know, I don't think they use the euro now, I'm not sure. Okay, so I just love this. What do you mean all my facts are wrong? I copied everything straight off the internet. Um, not big on copying stuff, but, you can paraphrase. Now, what does that mean? What does paraphrase mean? It means read it and then put it in your own words without using somebody else's words. That's it. It's as simple as that. And it's not that hard. You know, um, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, the cat ran over the dog. Okay? The cat ran over the dog. So you could paraphrase that by saying, um, I saw a cat run up to a dog, he run, ran over it, gave him a kiss and ran home and had a bowl of milk. Okay, that's, that's all it is. You took the information, the observation, and you turned it into something that is yours, that you own, okay? And that's kind of where we're at. You own it. If somebody else, like we put everything through originality checkers, if your originality is way high, um, you know what? I'm gonna have to send it back and you'd have to rewrite it. Uh, I'm pretty good about that. But, you know, we, we, I'm not assuming any of that's gonna happen. Okay, when you've completed your research, create a discussion post, which you're doing now, begin with the uh, usual greeting. I'm sure many of you've done that already. It's Thursday. Uh, you're gonna, got your facts and everything. So I'm not gonna really go over this. This is just week one. We're pretty much moving on to week two. Uh, the uh, uh, Davenport University Library has said, hey, guide dedicated to AP re APA resources. They do like that. Uh, they offer free web-based noodle tools and software and call the library if you need any help. If you wanna run your work through an originality checker, get a hold of the library. Um, okay, so this is how we grade it. This is a rubric, and I'll take a look at your, your work based on your content, your writing, and your APA. So obviously, if you don't do it in APA, you lose 10 points, so, you know, that's that goes down to a B, and then your writing, if you don't have proper grammar, that goes down to a C, and it, you know, so just, just know that we use rubrics. I'm sure this is not your first class going through this. And if it is, drop me a line. I'd, I'd really like to know that. So this week, you're going to be doing a mind map at the end of the week. And um, I'm, again, I'm not gonna, you, it, you can complete, let's see. During the course, you will complete two mind maps, one now and one at the end. To prepare for these assignments, please read what is mind mapping? And we'll talk about that now. The software is typically very quick and easy to learn. However, you will be responsible for learning how to use it yourself. And the DU tech support folks will be unable to assist you if you run into problems. So we'll talk about other options. Well, guess what? This is a mind map. This is what it looks like and it's basically a pictorial um, 
graph of different concepts and different directions that things go. We'll get into it. What is mind mapping and how to get started immediately? Okay, a mind map is a graphical way to represent ideas and concepts. It is a visual thinking tool that helps structuring information, helping you to better analyze, comprehend, synthesize, recall, and generate new ideas. Just as in every great idea, its power lies in its simplicity. All right, look at how nice this is. Just very simple. What we have is the center and we have these branches. And uh, you can do it, you know, uh, on a piece of paper and scan it into a JPEG file. Um, but, you know, this is really your creativity. A mind map, as opposed to traditional note taking or a linear text, which is just like reading a textbook, information is structured in a way that resembles much more closely how your brain actually works. That's true. We see an image and our brain translates it into, you know, uh, electricity, which we interpret, you know, as to whatever it is. So you see an apple through our eyes and your brain says it's an apple, as opposed to a banana. <laughs> that means your, that means your wires are crossed. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that. Uh, okay. It is an activity that is both analytical and artistic. It engages your brain in as much, much richer way, helping in all its cognitive functions. And best of all, it is fun. I did one. I really liked it. So we use the word cognitive functions. So here I am, and this is what I like to do. And sometimes if you're doing your essays and things like that, and if there's words in there, like terminology, you could, and I, I do this all the time, I just define it in my own words. And trust me, it makes the page look twice as long as if you didn't. So it's a good kind of, um, you know, say you're supposed to write like 500 words and you only have 300. Define everything, you know, but as long as it's in your own words. And you could say things like, oh, after reading Investopedia, you know, uh, I about, uh, in, oh, I read Investopedia or I looked at Investopedia about cognitive functions and I discovered that it means this and this and this and this, as long as you don't use the words that they use. So what are cognitive functions? Are the mental processes that allow us to receive, select, store, transform, develop, and recover information that we've received from external stimuli. Okay, you see an apple, our brain says it's an apple, and then it must be an apple. What's that saying about a duck? You know, if it walks like a duck, <laughs> if it sounds like a duck, and it looks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So it's certainly not a banana. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys are smiling. So, how does a mind map look? So, how does a mind map look like? That's great grammar. Better than explaining is showing you an example. These are all examples of mind maps. Kind of hard to read because they're so tiny. I like that one. Okay, here's one. And you could see that. And by the way, this is for you. I mean, I can read these. I, I see the directions going, but they're branches that branch off. But we'll give you some more information. This is a mind map about convenient, uh, it, um, conveniently enough mind mapping itself. It presents in a visual way the core elements and techniques on how to draw mind maps. Once you break the ingrained habit of linear note-taking, which is basically writing like a book, you know, when you take notes, you know, it says whatever, uh, you, you won't look back. Um, I'm a, I, I don't know. I think it would be difficult for me to 
do mind maps for everything that I'm doing. But occasionally I do do it, like setting up a recording studio. I, I did a mind map and it worked out great. So benefits and uses. Mind mapping avoids dull, linear thinking, jogging your creativity, and making note, taking fun again. All right. So mind maps can be used for note taking, brainstorming, problem solving, studying and memorization, planning, research and consolidating information from multiple resources and sources, presenting information, gaining insight on complex subjects and jogging your creativity. That's what I do. You know, like I'll, I have a pad of paper here and then I have like little lines. I have to do this and then I do that and I should have done that. And then I write little circles like doodles. It's like doodling, if you know what doodling is. How to draw a mind map. Start in the middle of a blank page, writing or drawing the idea you intend to develop. I would suggest that you use the page in landscape orientation. That's horizontal. Develop the related subtopics around this central topic, connecting each of them to the center with a line. Repeat the same process for the subtopics, generating lower level subtopics as you see fit. Connecting each of those to the corresponding subtopic. Okay, so let's just start going through it. Some more recommendations. Use colors. I love that. Drawing, symbols, all really cool. And if you do it on your computer, like in I have had people do it in um, Photoshop. I've had them do it in PowerPoint. You could put all kinds of little images, you know, tiny little images. You could put type in, or you could do it by hand if you're if that's interest of interest to you. Keep the topic labels as short as possible, keeping them to a single word, or better yet, to only a picture. Vary text size and color and alignment. Now. This is the secret to mind mapping. You are doing this for you. All right. Only in this class am I going to grade you on your accomplishments for mind mapping. And so there's always a positive and negative. I mean, if I can't read it, then, you know, or, I mean, read it at all, then I understand, you know, that, you know, what that situation is. So you need to, uh, you need to um, uh, think about that you're doing it for you, but make it legible enough for me to at least understand what you're doing. Okay, my mapping is an absolutely fascinating and rich topic. This post only scratches the surface. If you want more reference material now, Wikipedia is always a good starting point. Nah, I hate Wikipedia, so it's up to you. But Let's watch a film on how to do mind mapping. Let's not watch a film on how to do mind mapping. What, what happened to that film? Oops. Thank you. 
So one of the things I'm going to tell you is if you really need a lot more help, just go to YouTube and Google Mind Map. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up if anybody wants to talk. This particular little video I will put on um, the in announcements in the next day or so, and, uh, and also the PowerPoint, I'll put it out there. But um, that's kind of it. Uh, all I was going to say is just try to get you working on time. Uh, if you need help with anything, get a hold of me in course messages. If you need to talk with me, we could set up a time to talk. Um, you know, I, I just I should never say this, and I always do, and you always get myself in trouble. But I'm a pretty easy grader because I'm more competency based. I'm really looking for you to look at, to see if you understand the material. However, I really expect, you know, at this level to be able to write, you know, pretty well without a bunch of grammatical, you know, uh, grammatical errors. Uh, if you don't know about in text citations, I can say, you know, I, I think there might be a link on my announcements, or you could send me a note, or better yet, just go to YouTube and look under in-text citations. Know how to write um, your resources in proper APA format, and how to format your page. Um, I sometimes I'll send out a template that'll help you. And um, I, don't, I don't remember if I do it for this class or not. I haven't taught this class since the beginning of the year. So, uh, you know, I have to go back through and, and go through all of this stuff again. But I, I do want you to know that I'm here to help you, that don't be afraid to talk with me. You know, you don't have to say you're sorry if you ask me a question or you need you know, you need something, or if it's personal or whatever, um, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, uh, there for you. And I, and I think you really have to know that. I mean, maybe I'm different than other instructors, but I really am here for you. So uh, I want you to be happy and, and we're going to get through this like super quick. Okay, hold on. I'm going to open this up. Uh, if I can. <clears throat> no, don't want that. Okay. Uh, unmute. Well, this is not unmuting. Well, I don't know what to say. Do you, if uh, if you're not on a phone, could you? Type in any questions that you might have. Any questions? No? I'm all set. I don't have any questions. Oh, who's this? This is Cece. Hi, Cece. How are you? What a great Good. voice. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> Where are you located? Um, I'm in Kalamazoo. 
Okay, never been to Kalamazoo. I have been to, uh, where have I been? I've been to Detroit. I've been okay. to Troy. I was in Mackinac. Oh, that's nice. I've actually never been to Mackinac, but it looks absolutely beautiful. I did a movie there called oh, really? Somewhere in Time. Awesome. And I'll have I've to look been into to that it. place where the apples, Frankenmuth or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's it and so i stayed in troy i had a, a, a friend of mine a lady i was dating lots of years ago so kalamazoo michigan oh my gosh that's so yep. cool. but i want to move to north carolina so that's my goal <laughs> that's super well i'm here in los angeles awesome and, and it's cool i've been here all my life and uh you know it's uh it's just it's warm here all the time. North Carolina yeah. is beautiful. Oh, my cousin lives out there, and that's what made me want to go. I fell in love with it out there. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Um, I actually just got a new job. It's at Charles River Laboratories. It's in Matawan. No, I don't know that. Uh, uh, they, they do have quite a – we're actually – we're global, so there's quite a few 